I've waited so long. My favorite exchange over the next doc so far, someone on Twitter complaining, Next doc missed a huge opportunity to add a touchscreen. I guess I'll have to wait for the next version. Just ignoring that a decently built portable monitor is usually over $100 all on its own. It's always fun talking to people entitled to better and cheaper versions of products that don't actually exist yet. I dropped $230 on this Kickstarter project last March. It was supposed to ship in September, but it's finally here now, and I couldn't be more excited. The mission is simple. You take a laptop form factor, but none of the computer guts are in the case. It's a display, battery, keyboard, and trackpad with speakers and USB ports. Whatever you connect to the next dock actually controls the next dock. Immediately, the idea is to use a phone, preferably phones that support some kind of desktop mode, but there are a ton of other situations where a portable battery-powered display might come in handy. You could hook it up to a game console or a Raspberry Pi or a Nook. You could power and stream off of a Chromecast. You could use it as a second monitor for a camera. I'm only one day into opening the box, and it's not difficult to imagine a variety of places I'd want to use this. I've hooked it up to almost everything in the gadget lab, which has an HDMI output. Next Dock 2 comes well stocked. You get USB cable for your phone, a Y adapter for a Raspberry Pi, regional plugs for the AC adapter, and a couple different adapters for micro USB and HDMI. I've been dying for a product like this since seeing the Motorola Atrix use a lap dock years ago, especially over the last couple years. Our phones have gotten insanely powerful but we've lacked the accessories to really make use of all that power. We were almost there with Continuum on Windows phones, but now our phones can do some serious heavy lifting. Back to the next talk. First impressions, the build is solid. It's a 50 watt hour laptop battery in a metal case. It weighs in a little heavier than some of the thinnest notebooks available. I know some folks are gonna complain about the bezels, but I just can't care about an extra millimeter of trim here or there. It's a laptop. It's not immersive. I've got a VR headset for that. I do like this keyboard. It's somewhere in between my Matebook and my Pixelbook. Not as quiet, but respectable key travel. I personally like a bit of clack under my fingertips. The next dock is a bit soft there, but there's almost no flex around the middle of the keyboard where I often have concerns about durability. I have some confidence this looks like it's gonna hold up decently well. The weak spot for a lot of non-Apple laptop style solutions is the trackpad. Touch and response feels like the kind of plastic you get on a cheap netbook. It's completely functional, but the actual buttons in the bottom corners are gummy and imprecise. You're never going to use the actual clicks. Modern operating systems, Android included, seem to handle single tap, double tap, two finger tap for the right click just fine. Do that instead, you'll be a lot happier. The audio pass through works better than I thought it would. The speakers are a bit thin, especially after reviewing the Pixelbook Go. The headphone jack likewise, not audiophile grade, but way more convenient than not having a headphone jack. And I just think it's hilarious that you can use a next dock to replace what should never have been cut out of your phone. And for some of those concerns, like the trackpad or the headphone output, I just can't be bothered when the whole kit arrives under $300 full retail and shipped. The other major criticism I've encountered, oh, if I have to carry a, a laptop shell, I, I might as well just bring a laptop. And sure, I mean, it's not hard shopping older entry-level Chromebooks that beat this for price, but after using a Pixelbook Go, a decently powerful phone can significantly outperform Form a cheap Chromebook for most of the apps and services consumers might want to use. You can do a bunch of work from your phone. You'll get an LTE enabled laptop when it's plugged in without having to add another gadget to your cell phone bill. And when you're done using your phone as a laptop, it's still fully charged and ready to be a phone again. Even on this first day of use, there are some folks out there, I think we can point out who probably won't like this. If you hate innovation, or you really just don't like saving money, or you just despise getting more use out of the products you already own, you're definitely not gonna like the next doc too. Just stay away, spend more money on popular lifestyle labels, and use more operating systems than you probably need to. I'm only being a little facetious, but seriously, I do want to do some head-to-head -head testing. I've got a Chromebook, I've got my Matebook, I've got my older gaming laptop, they're all ready to jam. I think this is gonna be a fun showdown with some Android tablets. 
I'm just really stoked on this idea. I know you're going to see reviews that cover the bare minimum. I mean, I guess it works if you just need to cover the basics, but I've been showing for a while that $600 phones are starting to outpace $1,000 laptops for things like video rendering and gaming. So I'm gonna put the next stock through its paces, break it in a bit, and we'll report back. I think it's gonna be fun. I think you're gonna enjoy it. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to this channel. More than just waiting and waiting and waiting for mainstream manufacturers to deliver these kinds of potentially disruptive accessories, covering boutique options and Kickstarter successes is really exciting right now. If you would like to help support the production of those conversations, those broader gadget conversations, there are links below, or you might consider joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen. A growing community of fun, like-minded tech pals and a huge resource for me as I'm planning future videos and reviews. They're good people. I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next video.